let's uh let's talk a little bit about um when we're back in the arena we've got joey styles and taz introducing a royal rumble package that's all about the stats it doesn't feel like stats have always been a big deal in the wwe but it feels like it always is for the royal rumble they talk about how many competitors have been in it who was in it the longest who had the most eliminations I like this. It feels like a real sports breakdown. Yeah. You see those sort of stats uh, on ESPN and things like that when they're recapping games on Sports Center and the like. Uh, were you a fan of, of breaking down all the stats, or is that silly to you? No, I think it's. A, I think it adds to the excitement of the match. Yes. When, when you when you look at who you know who's spent the least amount of time in the Rumble, who spent the longest, who's eliminated the most, who's eliminated the, the least, who's ne- you know, I think there's, I think there's one where you know, there's a lot where people have never eliminated anybody, but I think there's like one, who is it? There's somebody that hasn't even been eliminated. Okay. There's one person. Oh, is that going? Is that who it was? Well, both of his feet didn't touch the floor ever. See, no. that's fucked up, man. <laughs> Just saying. That's fucked up. But uh, yes, I love that. I, I do. I think it makes it interesting. And it's like, all right, well, who's going to be the Iron Man this, this year? Is, is there going to be an Iron Man this year? Um, there are so many elements to that, that, you know, it, it kind of, I want to say with Kane, you know, it kind of started when we, we did the Kane spot, which became the diesel spot, which, you know, um, but it was where it stood in the middle of the ring. Everybody came out, just dumped, you know, just got rid of and and stood there, you know, held the ring for a long time and it was king of the mountain, by God. Um, I love those stats. Yeah, they're great, man. It makes the match that much bigger. And, and every year, you know, something, you know, it becomes more and more and, and the legends, the legends grow as well. And people remember that. They do. Uh, to be clear, Curtis Axel and Hornswoggle are probably two of the names you're thinking about of guys who were never actually eliminated. I do want to talk about the actual rumble match, but let's run through all of the competitors who were in this one in order at number one, it's the undertaker. Number two is Shawn Michaels given their most recent dust up at WrestleMania. That's a big one. Uh, you've got Santino and great Kali, hardcore Holly, John Morrison, Tommy Dreamer, Batista, Hornswoggle, Chuck Palumbo, Jamie Noble, CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Umaga, Snitsky, The Miz, Shelton Benjamin, Jimmy Snuka, Roddy Piper, Kane, Carlito, Mick Foley, Mr. Kennedy, Big Daddy V, Mark Henry, Chavo Guerrero, Finley, Elijah Burke, Triple H, and John Cena. Quite a group here. Obviously, it starts out big. You know, the prior year's Rumble came down to Undertaker and Sean. We know it's going to be Undertaker and Sean at WrestleMania. It's, um, or they're going to have a, a series of really unbelievable matches in the coming years at WrestleMania, rather. Batista comes in at number eight. He's going to last the longest in the Rumble. He goes 40 minutes. Uh, Triple H winds up having the most eliminations with six. The biggest pop before John Cena, at least to me, when I watched it back, felt like it was Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper in Madison Square Garden. Man, that just goes together like peanut butter and jelly, doesn't it, Bruce? Please. Yeah, and it was a surprise. And it was, and it was history. Man. It's, just, it's it's the hot rod in New York. And they never forget. We, uh, we know that the biggest pop is John Cena. Of course, uh, Cody told this story a few years ago that he just went for it with the undertaker. Once he was in the ring, drop kicks, kicking out of choke slams, things like that. Uh, pretty fun to, to hear about a young guy in there with the undertaker, but the reaction for John Cena at number 30 from the crowd, from the announcers. I mean, it's like an all time classic WWE moment. Was this Goosebump City for you when you were there live? They went to banana. It, 
it's yes it's goosebump city yes it's magical because you just never really can tell you hope um for for those of us in the back we're cheering you know what i mean we're like yeah fucking hey man this is so fucking cool to have john back and it was it, it, it was absolutely magical, you know. The garden is the god, is the god, and there's only one god. It was, yeah. I mean, you don't get a whole lot of those. So yes, this was this one was pretty damn cool. Hypothetically, bear with me here. If John Cena hadn't have been superhuman, you know, we said earlier that this is supposed to be six months before you can really start to rehab. He's back in under four. If that would not have happened, who do you think would have won the rumble? Dude, I have no idea because it didn't happen. So didn't have to think about it. And, and well, you know, it, it's the hypotheticals are always hard because you, you it could be anybody. You know, it, it could be Jeff Hardy running back out and winning the, the damn thing. It could be, you know, Ray pulling it. There, there are a million and one different scenarios, but there wasn't. Because once we knew we had John, we knew what we had. And there, you know, yeah, there's, there's A plans, there's B plans, there's C plans. But when your A plan works... And, it, and it's all said and done. A lot of times, man, you forget about those B and C plans. They didn't matter. Didn't you know? You know what I mean? It just didn't count. So it's, yeah. it's like it could be a take your pick. So how far in advance did you know Cena was coming? I guess is the question. Probably, I want to say six weeks, maybe. Oh, so you have plenty that it was, of time. That it, okay. that it was like, oh yeah, it was, he was making miraculous. I mean, they were working on him and saying, you know, he's going to, now he didn't tell anybody. He kept his mouth shut and it was like, and everybody just, very few people knew, first of all, but it was, it was just John training and John doing his thing. John was in plain sight. Right. So it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, something where, um, guys were like, "Oh, hey, did you see John Cena here? <gasps> He's gonna be in the room." No, it was like you know, John. John would come to the matches. John would come and watch and shit. He'd be be around. 